All right. G'day, everyone. Uh, welcome to Spud Fit again. We've got another super spuddy interview today. We're talking to Julie Simiana. Did I, I should have asked you before if I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was right. That was right. All right. Good. Julie Simiano is with us uh, to, to tell us all about how she became a super spuddy. So uh, can you just introduce yourself a little bit, Julie? Yeah. Uh, so I'm Julie and I was always uh, very active growing up. So I was all into sports and always outside and, and moving around. Uh, then I got diagnosed with an underactive thyroid. So that kind of started gaining some weight stopped doing the sports. And then all of my adult life, I've been battling being overweight, tried every diet you can think of every potion, lotion, all that stuff. Um, and nothing seemed to work. It was always the same cycle, right? I would do well. I might lose, you know, 10, 15 pounds. I think at the most one time I lost 50 pounds. Um, but then it comes back again, you know, you think you're doing good. So then you give yourself a reward, which at the time was always, uh, whatever food I was craving at the time, a pizza or a burger or whatever it was. And then that would just start the cycle over again. Um, so I don't know. I think probably a lot of people feel that same way, yeah. but yeah, that's a familiar story. I've, I've been there. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, that's very common, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Always, it's nice to, I'm sure people watching would say that it, it's nice to know that they're not the only one. Cause when I was doing that, I always felt like I was the only person that could, you know, it was clear I wasn't a rationally, you know, thinking person in, in this way, at least in, you know, in many ways I was, but in this way, I, I was not, you know, totally clear headed. And it was obvious if you look around that there are many overweight people and they're probably all going through the same thing I am. But at the time, I just felt like I was alone, you know, did you feel like that as well? Yeah, absolutely. Like people around me, they could eat whatever they wanted. They never gained anything. And, you know, me. I look at something and I put on five pounds and, you know, so I would, I would fall off and I would, I would have that whatever I was craving and then figure, well, since I had that, I might as well get the rest of the cravings out of the way and then start fresh again, you know, on Monday or whatever. Right. Same cycle, yeah. repetitive. And uh, yeah, so that was the majority of my adult life yeah. bouncing, you know, between 20, 20 pounds up and down, but never getting back to a healthy weight. And uh, in my early 30s, maybe about eight years ago, I got diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure, cholesterol, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. So I didn't really take it serious at first. So I just continued doing what I was doing. I was always trying to lose weight. I was always seeing a nutritionist or a personal trainer or trying, you know, the South Beach or keto or any of those. Right. I, I was trying them all um never any long-term success right yeah and yeah. uh that's that's a, again familiar to me i tried every diet as well and uh and yeah they're all they all work really well until they don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah so Here you go. maybe about maybe about 2019 i think it was i i came into work one day um i'd been on vacation so i hadn't seen some people in a while and this one guy had lost a ton of weight. And so I asked him what he was doing. And he's actually the one that told me about he's, he's only eating potatoes. All right. So everybody cool. at work. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Cool. Is yeah. So someone, uh, else someone else in, in the group or no, no, no. he's not okay. in the group. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so yeah, he, he told me about it and everybody was giving him a hard time because he'd be there just eating his potatoes, you know, and the weight had, was like, he lost, he lost a, a large amount of weight. So I, I'm like, sounds crazy enough, something I've never tried. I've tried all these other things. So let me give it a shot. What's it going to hurt? Right. So I did my own research and, uh, you know, I found you, I found some other people involved in this, uh, this way and I tried it. So at this time I, I wasn't at my highest weight, but I was my second highest weight that I've ever been. And I did all potatoes for the month of August in 2019. And, uh, what was it? So then I, I went on vacation. Actually, I lost, so I lost 30 pounds in just over a month doing the, wow. the potatoes only. Cool. Yeah. So it was great. Yeah. Uh, and then I went on vacation and fell off. So, yeah. you know, things uh, started going downhill again. And then in February of last year, I got pretty sick and went to the doctor and he had 
you know, I go for my blood work every three months or whatever. And so he said, he told me then he goes, if you keep going down the road, you're going, you know, your diabetes is out of control. And he goes, you're going to go on insulin and you could start losing limbs. Like if you, if you keep going this way, he was just trying to scare me a little bit, I think, you know, but maybe that's what I needed at the time. Yeah. And well, so it's, I, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a, a good scare tactic, but it's also true. You know, that's why it's, it's not just exactly. a, that scaring. It's like, I, I have a, a friend that anyone can look up, uh, Omena Van Dyken. She's a, she's a whole food plant-based surgeon and she, yeah, she posts photos of, you know, the gangrenous foot that she's about to cut off. And yeah, it's, uh, it's not nice. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. the side of diabetes that you don't really hear that much about, that people do lose limbs because of it. It's crazy. So. Right. Like I, I, I came across like John McMahon there recently. Right. And I, you know, when he was filming his videos and stuff and he almost burned his feet off. Right. And the, I don't know if you're familiar with his story at all, but, yeah. and, and that was from diabetes. Right. So yeah, it was a bit of an eye, eye opener there. So uh, that was beginning of 2020. I had come across some of the whole food plant base kind of ways. Cause I was a full meat eater and everything before that. Um, and so I went, I watched one of Chef AJ summits and I said, I said to my doctor, I said, you know, give me one more chance. Let me try this whole food plant-based thing. Let me see if I can get this under control on my own. And then if not, fine, I'll concede, put me on the insulin, you know? So he gave me uh, till June of 2020. And uh, so in March, you know, Corona half, like can't got here and we all kind of went into lockdown and all that stuff. So I figured this is my time to uh, focus on myself and what on my food and what I need to do, right? So I just, I started watching so many videos and following all you guys and doing all this stuff and started on my own little journey. And actually I said at the beginning, I said, you know, watch, we're, we're gonna come out of lockdown. I'll be skinny and I'll be a nutritionist. <laughs> and well, <laughs> I'm on my way. I'm like almost <laughs> done year one of school for uh, holistic nutrition so, oh, you have. wow amazing yeah yeah so I, I jumped right in I, I took uh uh Dr. Campbell's course there from yeah. Cornell University to plant-based nutrition so I did that I said you know let me try this and uh so I, I got my certificate in that and that was my little trial trial period to see okay do I want to invest in the, a three-year program yeah and uh yeah so I jumped in and now this is where we're at yeah, awesome. So, and that's yeah, gonna be, so you're gonna you're gonna have like a, a little advantage, which I think I have as well when I'm helping people, and and that is that I've I've been like I've you know you're gonna be dealing with overweight people, and there's so many nutritionists, nothing nothing wrong with any of them, you know they're trying to help and their hearts in the right place, and some of them, lots of them are probably very very good at it, but lots of them also uh, are at a disadvantage because they've not they don't know what it's like to be overweight and not, and to, to know that, Hey, that pizza's hurting me, but I'm going to eat it anyway. Like they don't know what that's like. And yeah. And yeah. There's just, yeah. Not that I, yeah, there's nothing you can do about that. Obviously it's just the way it is. And, but yeah. So right. yeah, that's going to, you know, your, your past experience of having all these struggles is going to become a strength of yours because you, you will know exactly you know, when, when someone you're talking to says, oh, yeah, but you don't know what it's like to be overweight, you can say, actually, here's a picture of me overweight. Here's I a picture. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I go, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah that, that's very true. Very true. Yeah. So well, that's good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. But I, I started falling off a little bit again last summer. Like I started to lose weight. My numbers came down a little bit. So the doctor by June didn't put me on the insulin, but I still wasn't where I needed to be. Yeah. And then I started falling off again. That's when uh, I saw you guys were going to do the spud timber. And I said, you know what? The potatoes worked for me before. Let me jump back on this again. Yeah. And let me give it another shot. So, uh, so really since September of 2020 is when I've done probably the bulk of my, my healthy lifestyle and the yeah. change. Right. Yeah. So, and now, now since January, I've been not potatoes only. I did potatoes only for January and now I'm more mega foods, but very, close to potatoes only just adding a few things because it's a, a mental battle yeah. you know and yeah, that's, uh, that's I feel right. like I'm still dealing with that right 
Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you're, you're relatively early on in in your um, you know new lifestyle, so yeah, you're still going to be battling from time to time. You're still going to have your your little struggles here and there, but yeah, the important thing is that you know you you win nearly all the battles, and uh, yeah, if not all of them, I'm very proud that I, I managed to get through that year of potatoes with, and I won every single battle. I never I never went <laughs> and had something I shouldn't have for that year, but you know, that was the exception rather than the rule for me. I'd never done anything like that before. And, um, but, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, at the same time, we don't need to let, you know, perfection be the enemy of good. We don't need to go and say, Hey, you know, I stuffed up this once and and now I'm just going to let it go. I loved what you said earlier, by the way, about, you know, I just now that I've, I've satisfied that one craving, I'll just get all the other cravings out of the way as if that yeah. is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just take everything in sight, then I won't crave anything anymore. <laughs> exactly. And then I'll keep that going for a while until I feel like getting healthier again. Yeah. 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 So. Well, no, we've all done that. And it's just, you know, this warped logic that somehow, yeah, we can just actually eat everything we want and then never worry about it again. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, for, for, I mean, for so many years in this, you know, I always wanted to know, like, I know not to eat the pizza. I know not to eat this and that, but why do I do it? Like if I know not to do it, why am I still doing it? Right. So this was like this internal battle that I feel, and I still, it's not as bad anymore. I, I, you know, I've kind of come to terms with the food addiction and I've done a lot of research now that now I'm understanding a lot more of the mental side of it Mm. um, and more of the why and the the dopamine triggers and the addiction. And, you know, that was a big thing because years ago, people didn't talk about food addiction. It was, you know, drug addiction or whatever, you know, it wasn't food you know yeah and and the behaviors you know i love that you you talk about that you knew you shouldn't have eaten the pizza and you you know you shouldn't eat whatever other junk food and you can look at you know pretty much everyone who smokes cigarettes these days wants to quit you know they they, everyone wants to quit smoking nobody uh, there's i'm not i'm sure there are people who like it and have no intention to quit and just think it's great but most people in my experience most people that i come in contact with either have tried or intend to try to quit and but they still keep on smoking they know it's bad for them but they still keep on doing it and it's why well because they're addicted and you know it's the same with food if if the behavior is the same then surely the condition is the same and yeah some people want to argue whether food addiction is actually a real thing and i'm like how can it not be you know the behavior is exactly the same every alcoholic wants to not be an alcoholic all of them but and they know that alcohol is hurting them, but they keep on drinking. Like, why? Because they're yeah. addicted. It's just, yeah. So it's pretty obvious to me. And I, and I guess it's very obvious to you as well. So, yeah, it's um, for me, that was a powerful thing when I realized that addiction was the problem rather than, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fat guy and being fat is the problem. Well, actually being fat is a symptom and the problem is addiction. Addiction is yes. the cause, and you know how how did that feel for you when you realized that for yourself? Yeah, so I was actually a, a smoker, so I'm an ex smoker. Oh. It's been almost three and a half years now, oh, well, and I had done that. I yeah, thank you. I quit for three years before, so I mean, I've I've been down that road before. So uh, I'm really relating a lot of this to that. Um, the thing with the smoking is that you can put it aside and not touch it again. Right. But you still need to eat. So that struggle is, is real and it's different, but I learned a lot from like Doug Lyle and stuff like that and extinction burst. And a lot of it just made sense what, what he was talking about. And it really resonated with me. Um, but yeah, so I don't really know how to explain how, how it was right. like dealing with this addiction. Right. Yeah, no worries. So, That's fine. Um, so I want to go uh, go back to something you said really early in this interview was that you talked about um, your thyroid issue. And, um, and that's interesting to me because that's something that I had no idea was so prevalent um, until I started doing this work. I hear from people almost daily who suffer with thyroid problems, Hashimoto's disease, you know, whatever, the, the, there's a few different things that come up. But yeah, the point is that it's very common. There are a lot of people who are taking thyroid medication for, for one of a number of um, ailments. And uh, and yeah, I just had no idea that it, it was such a big problem. And I think most people probably don't realize it's such a big problem. 
I get people writing to me and saying, hey, I want to try this, but I'm not sure how it's going to be for my thyroid problem. And I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> so many people have done it with a thyroid problem and it, and it has, you know, it's, it's done really well for them. So can you tell us, you know, I'm sure somebody is going to be watching this who has a thyroid issue of their own. So can you tell us about your experience with that? Yeah, so I had an underactive thyroid since I was a teenager. Um, it's still not perfect right now, but it's in a it's in the good range. And I, I actually haven't been taking my medication. I, not that that's right. a recommended thing, but you know I am working with my doctor. He's aware that of what I'm doing. Okay, that's um, important and to, I, to note. So yeah, stop there yeah. because you know I want people to be safe here. And and as yeah. far as my own research goes, I'm not a doctor, but as far as my own research goes, um, these thyroid conditions are not curable but we can you know greatly reduce our reliance on medication and i've coached one-on-one -on -one lots of people who have who have seen huge drops in the amount of medication that they need but i've never heard of anyone who's been able to go off medication so you're the first person i've spoken yeah. who's done that so i'm interested yeah. i want everybody to be very careful who's watching and not do this without <laughs> your doctor i'm very glad that you're doing it with your doctor and, and i'm very keen to hear more about that <laughs> Yeah. So like I did just have my blood work done uh, last week and uh, my numbers were all great. And I did tell them I, I hadn't been taking it and they said, okay, well, we'll check it again the next time and see. So if the numbers are still good, then, you know, we're keeping an eye on it, but yeah. So potatoes haven't harmed my thyroid or, you know, like all my blood work came back almost perfect. The only thing was my sugar levels for my diabetes. I was 0.3 over where, uh, I'm in a pre-diabetic range. So yep. I'm almost even out of having diabetes. Amazing, you know? yeah. That's yeah, great. that's well, still medicated, that's... but you know, that's all the right steps going to get off the medication, right? Which is now what my goal has become. Yeah. Uh, like last year, I decided that instead of, my goal was always to lose weight, that never worked for me. So last year I said, you know what, maybe this whole food plant-based thing has some uh, merit to it. And maybe I can reverse these, these illnesses with food, right? Because yeah. I really learned a lot about about diabetes, right? Not to yeah. go off from Maybe. thyroid, but yeah. This is great. So so how long, you know, onto the diabetes now, how long did it take uh, until you noticed some uh, differences in, in your, the way that you could tolerate carbohydrates? Uh, it didn't take long at all. So let's say, February, 2020, my, my A1C, it was 10.5. That's when the doctor was telling me, okay, you're going to be going on insulin. Um, I started a whole food plant-based diet more, more or less, um, March or April. And by June I was at 8.3. So yeah. even though it's still high, it was going in the right direction. So he said, okay, continue doing what you're doing. Then I went, uh, I told you I did the spud timber. Yeah. So we did that in September. And then I went for blood work in October. And my numbers were 6.8. All right. So ama amazing. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, so we kept, so kept going. And then I don't know, we're usually trying to aim for under six with diabetes. Right. Um, so right. yeah, to get from 10.5 down to 6.8, that's that's great. Yeah. So sorry. Yeah, and then when oh, I went last, know. yeah, last week I was uh, 6.2. Amazing. So, yeah, almost out of there. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. And uh yeah, that's uh, this is something I hear all the time as well. Like diabetes, everybody knows diabetes is a big problem. It's different to the thyroid stuff. I think thyroids, I um, think it's probably nowhere near as big as diabetes is, but it is a big problem. Um, but yeah, diabetes comes up all the time, and uh, and it's yeah great that people can see from you that that uh, yeah you you can get improvements. And it's also important to note that you know this is a year long journey for you so far from February last year until you know, it's March now. So it's a bit over a year that it's taken you to get your blood sugar down to that level. Um, and I think it's great that you set that example because a lot of people change their diet and you know, in, in four days they're going, hey, how come my diabetes is not better yet? <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know, sometimes it takes a while. Some people, it, it is better in a week or two weeks. You know, I had one guy who had been type two diabetic for 30 years and in, in literally in two weeks, it was, he was done with it. His blood sugar was normal, no medication, everything was done in two weeks. And that's great, but it's, yeah. that's not the way it happens for everybody. Some people, it takes a long time. Some people, it happens quickly. From my experience, it works for everybody. If you stick with 
potatoes and whole food plant-based eating and you know rem- keep all the junk out then it works for everybody but it, it just it's a, the only thing that's a question mark is how long is it going to take so um yeah i'm really you should feel proud that you've stuck with it for for this long and you're consistently seeing it go down and down and down and, and uh yeah so well done on that <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's where like changing my why really helped because now it's, you know, trust the process. So before, you know, I get on the scale, the scale wouldn't move. You kick over the table, you quit. That's it. (laughs) You know, now I get on the scale, it doesn't move. I get frustrated with that. I divorce it. We move on and I go back to potatoes and keep trusting the process and going with it because all my other numbers are getting better. My clothes are changing. So, you know, it's all, it's all good signs. So, yeah. Yeah, well done. And that's a great that's attitude. Process. <laughs> yeah, that's a great attitude to have because, you know, you're only human. And of course, you want to see the number on the scales going down. Of course, you want to, you know, fit into your skinny jeans or, you know, you want to look good in a bikini or whatever it is, you know, there are all these different things that people want. And it's only human to want those things. But, but yeah, it's really also a powerful thing when you realize that, yeah, I am the way I am because of my behavior. And I will get to where I want to be also because of my behavior. So if I focus on my behavior and I'll just let the rest take care of itself. And, um, and yeah, you can get frustrated when the scales don't move, but then you, you get back to going, okay, if I want the scales to move, what have I got to do? I've got to keep on doing, you know, I've got a good plan here. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to trust the process, like you said, and, and things will work out and yeah, it might not, it's, no matter how fast you lose weight, it's not going to be fast enough. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to happen in the end. And, uh, and yeah, and what you're doing more importantly than just, you know, you can lose the weight really fast as you've done in the past. But, you know, the important thing is that you're doing it in, in a sustainable way now that, you know, you can keep this going for a long time. So, well, for a long time, yeah. forever, you can keep it going. So, yeah, that's great. Now, yeah. um, you also mentioned uh, hypertension. So yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I more got diagnosed with that with the diabetes, cholesterol, the, the high blood pressure, all that. It kind of came as a package deal. Yeah, so and it often does. Yeah, the, most yeah. of the time we don't just have one little thing that's wrong with us. There's, there's a yeah, a package deal, perfect word for it. Sorry, keep going. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, all those numbers have come down. I'm on the lowest medication for blood pressure. I'm on the lowest medication for cholesterol. So I'm hoping the next step will be uh, to come off of them. All those numbers were, were good with my last doctor's visit. So he was really impressed and told me, keep going, doing what I'm doing. He is surprised that uh, it's with potatoes. He is still a little in disbelief, but you know, he's seeing the numbers, right? Numbers so, don't lie. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, well, that's great. So, so uh, yeah, other things that I wanted to, to talk about was, well, we, in our, in our Spud Fit Challenge little community that we've got, we do these group coaching calls and, uh, and the other day you joined in and you were going for a walk while you had Zoom on your phone and you were, you're taking us out for a walk. And I thought that was really <laughs> cool. I, I really, uh, you know, you're killing two birds with one stone doing this, this group coaching meeting, but also getting some steps in. So, um, yeah, I'm interested to hear about how your relationship with exercise and with just m- moving your body in general has evolved and, uh, and yeah, you know, what was it like before and what's it like now and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, before I was, well, when I was young, I was very active, I said, but then, you know, as I've been an adult, I've been pretty sedentary. So, uh, but since being on potatoes, my energy is through the roof. I, nothing compares with it. Right. So maybe the first time when I did the potatoes only in 2019, and I was coming off of a really bad diet. The first few days were horrible. And uh, I had heard days three and four were the worst. And on day two, I thought I was going to die. Um, I felt so sick. And I was like, if day three and four are worse than today, I can't do this. Um, so day three comes and I said, okay, I, I, made myself a black coffee and a plate of French air fried French fries. And I, I lied on the couch and I said, okay, I'm going to eat these fries and I'm just going to watch a movie and just be grumpy or whatever. Just, you know, uh, just get through this. Uh, so I ate my fries and then I was like, well, the spice cupboard's a little unorganized. Let me just go and, and see what's in there. All of a sudden I'm pulling everything out of the cupboard and then I'm sweeping and mopping and cleaning the house. And I'm like, 
what happened? <laughs> I was expecting to do nothing today. I was expecting to feel lousy. And here I'm, I'm just full of energy. And this was only on day three. And from then on, the energy was through the roof. And I was out walking and eventually, not, not that round, but now I'm out jogging and, you know, not a lot, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a step in the right direction. And yeah, yeah so I, I can't stop now. And even I'll be <laughs> eating my potatoes and I, I'm dancing. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I'm constantly moving. I think people at work, I mean, they already knew I was kind of crazy, but now, you know, I, I've confirmed that. Um, <laughs> but the, the funny thing is they're all supportive now, right? They're seeing the results. So they, they all know, like I, I've been working at this place a really long time. So they know I've tried all these crazy things and how long do you stay on it before you, you fall off. So yeah, this time they're, they're being pretty supportive of it. So they're like, Oh, are you going out for your walk? Are you going out skipping? Are you doing this? Okay. Are you, yeah. And now I got some people joining along with me and coming out for the walks with me. So oh, it's, it's wow. great, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you really, well, that's, that's a good thing to talk about now as well. Cause before we started this interview, we had a little chat about how you're really, you know, it's exciting to you that you're helping other people as well, just, you know, setting an example and that's, you know, your example is rubbing off on the people around you. So yeah, that's, for me, that's by far the, the coolest thing. And not, something I never expected was that, you know, I'd eat only potatoes and then this whole thing would start. And, and you know, five years later, I'm still helping other people do it. And yeah, uh, it's it's very, very cool. So yeah, that's a, it's a good time to talk about that. How's that been for you? You know, you started this thing for yourself. You, you wanted to deal with your diabetes and and uh and your thyroid and your hypertension and whatever else and you obviously you wanted to lose some weight but it was all selfish i guess in the beginning selfish is a bad word for it you know it's it's not sometimes well maybe it's not a bad word it's okay to be selfish no. sometimes there's nothing wrong with wanting to something good for yourself but the point is that it's expanded beyond a selfish pursuit and and tell us how that's gone yeah so uh like, like he's just said, I, I started this for myself and uh, I don't think selfish is a bad thing because I've always, you know, I'm always helping other people and doing everything no, for everything else. I never that. had, I no, no, it's that. all good. Yeah, it's, but it does, I guess, sometimes the word selfish has bad connotations, but it's, right. you know, it's a situational thing and your situation to use the word selfish is perfectly fine. So I'm sorry for saying that, but yeah, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So now I'm finding like, yeah, people not that they weren't walking before, but now, you know, it seems like we're getting little groups together and we're going out and walking and, you know, I'm getting more people asking like, what are you doing? Or, Oh, Hey, what are you eating? Let me guess potatoes. Yeah. And then I had one guy the other day, he said, Oh, are you making those potatoes again? I said, which ones? <laughs> so I, I, I had brought some in the other day and uh, I let some people try them. Right. Cause you know, so he said, oh, those ones you made the other day, those were really good. Are you going to make them again? Bring them in. <laughs> so, uh, and, you know, they, they're not, uh, no, no uh, intention of trying this or anything like that, right? But they're seeing the results, so they're getting interested. And then I, I posted on Facebook, I posted a comparison picture and just, you know, the love that came back from that and just people that I know that are in my life that, you know, commenting how I'm inspiring them and stuff like that, that that was pretty moving. That was touching. I wasn't yeah. really expecting, you know, because who am I? Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's amazing. And yeah, it's, and you're going to inspire, you know, just because the people are not joining in with you and deciding to eat only potatoes, uh, you know, you're showing people that it's that, you know, you can do hard things. Basically that's what you're showing. I've had people write to me and say that, you know, I inspired them through eating only potatoes for a year that I showed them that it was possible for them to, you know, do a big ultra marathon or like, yeah. Or I had somebody who was getting back into, um, into theater groups after, you know, decades of not doing, not following their passion of being involved in theater. They somehow they, my watching my story helped them connect some dots and just go, yeah, I'm going to get back into theater and like, wow, how great is that? You know? So yeah, not just a, a direct, like, that guy that you know julie's eating only potatoes so i'm going to do that too which is cool that will happen as well but you know it's just it's sort of it's weird how these things happen and yeah it's really cool that you're you're helping so many other people as well and it'll continue to grow the more you keep going oh you're going to be a nutritionist at some point and you know, right right your impact's <laughs> just going to get bigger and bigger so this is really cool <laughs> yeah 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 and oh and wow. i'm not 
I forgot to say as well with the exercise thing, um, I, I often get people writing to me and asking about, you know, we've got to exercise, how, what exercise should I do? How much exercise should I, should I do? And what's the right kind and all that. And I always say, forget about exercise. It's not, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about exercise. What's going to happen is that you're going to um, start eating only potatoes. You'll have a period of time where it might be a bit hard. And then after a little while, your energy will pick up to the point where you're, you're, like you can't not exercise you've got to do something to burn it off and uh yeah so i thought that was it was cool you had the same experience because that comes up all yeah <laughs> yeah and i don't think i don't think people understand that until they actually go through it themselves right because mm. it's hard to it's hard for them to understand that oh you're just eating potatoes and all of a sudden now you're like you know running miles and doing all this stuff so yeah. in, like in the past you know i did the traditional i'd get a personal trainer i would go to the gym i would do all this this time I said, I'm throwing all those rules out. I, I'm doing things my way. I'm going to eat potatoes and I'm going to dance. Like I was never a dancer, but Hey, I'm going to put some music on and I'm going to dance and just have a dance party. And why not? Right. It burns some yeah. calories and it's fun. Right. So, so fun. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's great. Uh, we do that at home too. We have dance parties with the boys and yeah, you get some exercise in, you get your steps up and you have a great time. Right. The music. Exactly. Yeah. For me, it was, uh, yeah, yeah I, I had no plans to exercise. That was not part of my plan at all. And then after a few weeks, I noticed that I was, like when I was sitting on the couch or something, my, my knees, I'd be bouncing my knees up and down. And, uh, and that was a new thing. I was like, why am I doing this? I'm bouncing my knees all the time. I can't stop bouncing. And then I also noticed that I, was, I would find myself like wandering from room to room around our, our little apartment. I'm like, you know, wander into a room, have a look around and then, Oh, I don't really know why I'm here. Wander out into the next room and like just looking for something to do. <laughs> and then it, yeah, it, that's how yeah. that's how I start doing laps in the parking lot. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, and then it took me a few days of doing that, and then I went, oh, I think that's just that I've got too much energy. Maybe I should just instead of wandering from room to room in our tiny apartment, maybe I should just go for a walk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I started started doing that. It's probably similar to you with walking in your car park like you did on that Zoom call the other day. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Just, yeah, and, and it happens. It happens all the time. So yeah, it's really cool that yeah these these little unintentional um, side benefits of this come up as well. So. Yeah. yeah, I actually I, I coach a girls softball team. And so I haven't seen them since probably late summer last year. So I'm yeah. hoping to, to surprise them a little bit. And maybe oh, yeah. instead of their coach, just, you know, instead of their coach telling them what to go do, I'm going to go lead the jog or lead the warm up or, you know, do it with them. Wow. Right. That's so, yeah, that so should be powerful. interesting. Yeah. And yeah. you're going you're gonna to have kids in that team who are at some point in their lives are going to struggle with their own weight. And, and they're going to look back and say, hey, our coach did that. You know, maybe there's a way, yeah. you know, maybe I'm yeah. not hopeless because our coach did that. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah. So I got to keep going. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's not about you anymore. <laughs> you got yeah. to keep going. <laughs> no, this, yeah. is, this is good. So if, if there was people watching who, you know, uh, uh, have, they're inspired by you or, you know, certain parts of your story mirror their story. And, you know, they're, they're just the, the biggest thing for, well, not the biggest thing, but a big thing for a lot of people is that, yeah, this sounds like a good idea. You know, it's something I should do, but, you know, I just, I just can't get myself started. You know, how, what would you say to that person? Just start. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just start. Yeah. Um, there's always a reason not to start, you know, yeah. there's always an excuse. I, I found that with smoking and, and I, I am finding this, I relate a lot of things back to quitting smoking. Mm. Um, there's so many comparisons with it. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's just potatoes, go buy a bag of potatoes, cook them, eat them. You've started, yeah. you know, perfect. And it, it's as easy as that. Yeah. And it's perfect in, in its simplicity, you know, potato, the whole spud pit challenge is it's all about simplicity and and i love how simple that piece of advice is because really we complicate things we think about you know if i want to do this for a month we just think oh a month of potatoes is really hard and you know it's going to be what am i going to be doing on day 24 or whatever you know it's there's all these thoughts coming to our head and and all we we forget that you know we all those none of those questions really even matter the real the only question worth asking is can i eat potatoes only at my next meal 
exactly. Sometimes um, it's too big of a picture, right? Like it's yeah. too far. It's too hard to look that far down the road. So it's, yeah. you know, one day at a time, one meal at a time. Yeah. You know, yeah, I still, exactly. I, I, I still don't say I'm never going to smoke again. I just say I'm not going to smoke today. Right. So, yeah. you know, I'm just not going to eat that burger today. I'm, you know, I'm going to have potatoes or, you know, and, and now that I've been doing this, my, I'm noticing that my taste buds are changing, my body's changing. And, you know, if I do slip up because, you know, that little junkie is still yelling at me, you know, just have a little bit, just have a little. And if I do have something now, I don't feel good and yeah. it wasn't worth it. So what it tasted good for five minutes and then I feel miserable for hours. So yeah. now that helps, you know, because people are getting that, you know, that bad food or whatever kind of food you want to call it all the time, all around me. Um, but it's getting easier now to say, you know what? Yeah. Okay. That smells good. It looks good, but I, I'm not going to feel good after, and yeah. I'm going to want to take a nap. So I'm going to eat my potatoes and I'm going to go run laps in the parking lot. And yeah, it's uh, definitely changing the way that I'm looking at things now in a short period of time. Awesome. Well, that's what yeah. it's all about. Changing the way you're looking at things. It's uh, yeah. So much of, so much of changing your health, changing your life is just about learning to see different situations from a new perspective and um and yeah i'm really i'm really proud of how far you've come and how you've how you've learned to see things differently and and uh and yeah what an amazing change you know just to to go from a from a, an overweight person struggling with health in in all those different ways that we've talked about to you know clearly someone who is is very healthy and only getting healthier and fitter and and even studying nutrition now it's uh yeah this is a big deal you've, you've done amazing things and you should be really proud yeah thank you thank you i still don't fully trust myself yet so uh, you know i don't feel i'm ready to be far from potatoes so i yeah. i'm on day 84 now of having potatoes every day i'm going to continue that until i don't know when yeah but, yeah. Uh, yeah well i'm five years later so, and i'm still having potatoes every day and uh <laughs> yeah and, and i like it that way you know there's no you know there's no end in sight for me. I'm, um, you know, potatoes are, potatoes are my, uh, you know, the they're staple. My, they're the my staple. staple. Yeah, that's that's the word I was looking for. They're my staple. And, you know, this morning I had rice for breakfast. I didn't have potatoes, but I will have potatoes over the course of the day. And yeah, uh, yeah it's all it's all good. So, um, Go, actually, question, just yeah. going. Sorry, sorry, yep. just going back to the simplicity that you were talking about. So what? before when I started doing potatoes only, cause I was always a foodie and I love cooking and all this. So I was always about food. Um, so I had to try to come up with all the creative ways, you know, make a potato mm. pizza or make a potato this. And, and now, yeah, it's about simplicity. So just before we met up here, I had some mashed potatoes with some mashed sweet potatoes mixed in. And I just ate it cold cause I didn't feel like warming it up and just threw in some like cabbage with it. And that was it, right? Like, yeah. And that was satisfying to me because I didn't need anything else, right? Maybe after I'll have an apple. I don't know. That'll. Yeah. I'm finding now, like, what I'm craving is completely different from what I was craving before. Like now, I want broccoli and fruit. Like, yeah, it's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it is crazy. Yeah, it's totally nuts. I eat broccoli nearly every day, and I hated broccoli yeah. before. And to be honest, I'm still not a huge fan of broccoli. I don't think it's like an amazing, delicious, perfect food or whatever. But but, you know, I, I look at food a little bit differently now. Most of what I eat, I really enjoy. But, but you know, to me, eating broccoli is a bit like doing the vacuuming at home. You know, I don't really like <laughs> doing the vacuuming, but i got to do it because I like living in a house that's been vacuumed. <laughs> right. And, right. Uh, and, you know, I don't particularly like eating broccoli, but i got to do it because I like living in a body that's eaten broccoli. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. So, yeah. Oh, and the question I was going to ask was, yeah, tell us a little bit more about like actually what a day of eating looks like for you. So you've still sort of started with that, but can you can you give us a couple more examples of maybe tell us what you got planned for tomorrow? What do you think you'll eat tomorrow? Uh, I'm going to eat potatoes for sure. Yeah. So us usually I have I, I like having French fries for breakfast yep. because who doesn't like French fries for breakfast? I mean, that's just such yeah. a great way to start your day. <laughs> so, yeah, mo most days I eat French fr air fried, you know, no oil, no butter, not, no fats. So yeah. I just, uh, I cut up some potatoes. I throw them in the air fryer. I maybe put some seasoning on them and uh, I'll eat those maybe with some ketchup or barbecue sauce or something. Uh, and then I'm, I'm good for a while. And I'll take, I'll take some potatoes with me. Uh, 
I like doing mashed potatoes or roasted potatoes. Um, I haven't really got into too many baked potatoes. I'll make them, but then I don't eat them. I'll eat some, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so right now I'm having a little fruit. So I'll have some fruit and maybe a little bit of vegetables. But sometimes uh, if I start giving myself a little bit too much, it's a very slippery slope for me. Yeah. So if I say, okay, I can have a little bit of broccoli or I can have a little bit of Brussels sprouts or, oh, and then all of a sudden a pizza sliding in there. So yeah. <laughs> as, as soon as soon as I start thinking, okay, this is getting a little, uh, a little loose here, I, I revert back to potatoes. Yeah. Potatoes has become right. the safety net, you know? And it's, so, it's yeah. great you've developed that self-awareness that, you know, you can see, you can watch your thoughts in a sense, you can see what's going on in your head and you can, you can, um, you know, in a calm and, and a relaxed kind of way, you can observe your thoughts and go, actually, yeah, let's put the brakes on here. We can, you know, we can stop, <clears throat> we can stop this before it happens instead of trying to pick up the pieces afterwards. And uh, right. yeah, that's a, it's a beautiful thing. So well yeah. done. And, and take, and going through some of the courses that you're offering too. I mean, like some of the rules, they really come in into play. Like before COVID and everything, I had gone to a birthday party and I was on potatoes only. Um, and I brought a birthday cake for the person and it was my favorite cake. And I told myself, you can have a piece, but you got to eat your potatoes first. Yeah. <laughs> but I had every intent. I had every intention of having a piece of cake. Uh, so I went, went to this party and it was, this person is a big foodie too. So there was all delicious food, like a whole spread. And I, I brought my little lunch bag with, uh, six different kinds of potatoes or however many kinds of potatoes I brought. And when they had their appetizer, I had potatoes. And then when they had their main course, I had some soup. And then when they had dessert, I said, okay, I'm going to have a piece of cake, but first I have to eat these potatoes and then I'll have the cake. I ate the potatoes and I was so full. I'm like, I don't even really want the cake anymore. Yeah. And like, that was just so uh, eye opening to me because even going there, like I had every intention to have it. And I didn't feel like I missed out in any way, you know, so yeah. it was great. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I've, I've done yeah. that myself many times. It's amazing. It works every time. And obviously, I've taught a lot of people that rule now, too. And yeah, it works. It just works. You just you don't have yeah. to deprive yourself of anything. You just have to eat your potatoes first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> and that way you get everything you want, because once right? you eat potatoes, you don't want the cake anyway. So you had everything you want. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly and yeah. i felt amazing after so yeah yeah and you yeah. get to feel proud of that instead of feeling you know depressed and upset with yourself that you know i had i had a piece of cake and and that piece of cake became three pieces of cake and <laughs> you know right you don't have to and that would make you upset or would me anyway and uh and yeah instead of that you replace that feeling of shame and guilt and remorse with being proud of yourself Oh uh, yeah, there's, yeah. There's, I, I've actually, yeah, I've been learning a lot about that too. And like our internal audience and everything. Right. So like in the past, it was all about, you know, your external feedback and, you know, hearing from people, you know, that you're doing a good job and that's what we were always, you know, kind of searching for. And yeah. I'm not denying it. It's nice to hear positive feedback from, from people. Right. But what I found lately is I'm really searching for that, that internal feedback and that internal voice to be proud and, mm. you know, I, I like to dance around the, the rules a little bit, you know, maybe that's the Gen X in me. I don't know, but um, you know, I can't lie to myself, right. I can lie to anybody. Well, no, I'm not a liar, but you know, I could tell people whatever I want, you know, and, and they don't know the difference, but I know. Right. So I can't, I can't BS myself. So it, yeah. it really keeps me in check. Right. Yeah. Well, my, my example of that was like, if I went to do the grocery shopping uh, then I would, I would, buy like a, a packet of cookies and I would eat them in the car on the way home and then I would put the wrapper in the bin so that my wife didn't know it happened and um you know I didn't lie to her and tell her that I didn't do it but you know it just it doesn't come up she's not going to say hey what did you eat in the car on the way home it's just exactly. like you know nobody knows about it but my internal audience knows about it and when I put my head on the pillow at night you know I'm uh, that conversation is happening about you know what are you doing why did you do that you know this is and, then, and it's not yeah and it, and it doesn't up. shut up yeah 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 it's, uh, but, so yeah. yeah that that's what I yeah that's what I'm finding more that I'm searching for that more now is that internal satisfaction and that you know the pride that comes from that so yeah it's just it's crazy the transformation that's been happening especially in the last few months yeah 
so yeah well, that's yeah. a beautiful thing and uh and i think any, anyone watching you should check out uh some doug lyle talks because uh he's a brilliant uh brilliant man and he talks a lot about that internal audience as well and uh and yeah my courses as well i talk about it in in my courses so check those out too and uh and yeah, I think that's a, a, a good place to finish, Julie, because it is a it is a big, you know, it's a mental battle. It's all mental, you know. It, it's yeah. you put your potato in your mouth, chew it, and swallow it. That's the simple bit, you know. Actually, getting <laughs> to the point where you can talk yourself into doing that—that's the hard bit. So that's the bit we need to right. focus on. And and you're learning a lot about yourself, and you have learned a lot about yourself. As am I. It's a work in progress, and. Uh, yeah, I think you deserve congratulations. And I'm sure lots of people are going to be inspired and encouraged by your story. So thank you for talking with us. Well, thank you. Thanks for everything you guys have been doing. So I wouldn't be where I was now if you didn't go through this first. So thank you. <laughs> no worries. It's, uh, it's my pleasure. Uh, so yeah, if anyone wants to uh, get involved in the SpudFit Challenge, then just go to spudfit.com and you can sign up there and you can do it for free. Uh, you can join our Facebook group for free and you get some, get some gear there to, to get you started. So come and join in. Uh, thanks again, Julie. And yeah, uh, thank you. Spot up everybody. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Uh,